Hello everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome to PIWC Online Sunday Service. And thank God today is just a communion service. Join us as we break bread to the Lord. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Everybody, so open the eyes.
worship our God. Let's get into the mood of worship. Just think about how far he's brought us. We're in the first Sunday of a new month. Just begin to worship. Say something unto God. For you are worthy, O oh God, of all the praise and all the worship and all the adoration. You deserve it all, O oh God. We give you all the glory today. We give you all the praise today, O oh God. We worship your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. Even through the midst of all of this, O oh God, you still, you still are God, O oh God. And we worship your name today. Jesus, we worship you, God. We thank you, Lord, for everything. Oh, Lord, we worship your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We bless your name, God. We thank you, Lord, Jesus. Oh God, we worship your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory that you deserve today. We worship your name, Jesus. We give you the glory, Jesus. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you all the glory.
worship your name, Jesus. We bless the name of God. Baba, send me a da 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 ba. Baba, send me a da 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 ba ba ba. Give me a da 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 ba ba. Send me a da 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 ba. Give me a da 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 ba ba. Send me a da 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 ba. Give me a da 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 ba ba ba. Send me a da 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 ba. Oh God, we worship your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us. Oh God, Baba, send me a da 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 ba. Oh God, we worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship your name, oh God. Mama, send me the da 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 ba. We lift you higher, oh God. We raise your name up, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for everything you have done for us, oh God. We worship your name, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. We give you all the glory, oh God. We worship your name, Jesus. We give you all the glory, oh God. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We say that your name will not be compared to any other name. Who can compare unto you, Lord Jesus? We worship your name, Jesus. We bless your name, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We worship your name, oh Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord.
So, Father, we just want to thank you once again. We want to worship your name, Jesus. We ask you, Lord Jesus, that you have your way for the rest of this service. We thank you, Lord, for such an encounter. We thank you, Lord, for such a word. Have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Great are you. to be praised. 
greatly to be praised. Uh, Father, you reign great and the bros. Greatly to be praised. Greatly to be praised. Hey, Father, you reign. We honor you, Jesus. Give you all glory for indeed you are great and greatly to be praised. Have your way in our midst this morning that all honor and glory will be ascribed unto your name. We bless you for your presence in our midst, even in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, we bless the Lord this morning for his presence that is tangibly felt right here in our midst. I want to take this opportunity to thank the church family for your support, your prayers, even the last couple of weeks uh, that were so tough and difficult for my family. Uh, I thank you for giving me the permission to take a sabbatical uh, to attend to that business. I also want to render my sincere appreciation to the area head for filling in for me last Sunday with such a powerful word trust in the Lord, uh, not forgetting the presiding elder who also filled in uh, the week before. We thank God for his word, even as he speaks through his servants that come to edify our souls and our spirits. May him alone be praised. Amen. This morning, we just wanted to continue with our series. Uh, we began the month of April uh, to talk about a very poignant topic, a relevant topic even in these times and seasons. Uh, we decided to delve into the Word of God in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 19 uh, talking about the topic be armed and stand properly armed. Stand properly armed. Uh, the past couple of times that we began we talked about the fact that in these times and seasons God is looking for army who are ready and prepared to do spiritual battle. We talked about the fact that the doctors are doing their job, the politicians are doing their job, nurses and scientists and researchers are all doing their job. Hey, the media is even doing their job, reporting as much as they can. The time has come for you and I also to do what we've been called to do best, soldiers of the cross, to be able to stand. But while we're standing, we ought to ensure that we are properly armed. So let's quickly turn to our scripture, Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 19. Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 19. I read from the New King James Version, and uh, even as we go through the word of the Lord. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in evil day, and having done so, and having done all, Stand. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shut the feet with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, and being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. Amen. So this morning we want to continue and touch on the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. We started the story with David who had an encounter with Goliath, an unusual battle. 
The Bible says that King Saul called him to the palace and asked him to put on an armor. Uh, we realize in the story that when David put on the armor with all the weight that it bared, he couldn't even take one step. Therefore, he took it off. Why? Because he said he has not tried this before. He has not used this before. He can't operate in this before. Though it was a good armor, Saul has won many battles with it. But David, when he put it on, realized that this is not the kind of armor I need for this particular battle. This morning, I pray that God will reveal to us his great armor that is ready and prepared for a battle such as the one that we find ourselves in. But this time, we're talking about the breastplate of righteousness. Now, in a physical armor, you realize that that is what covers the frontage of the military man. So it covers all the vital organs, the heart, the loins, the, 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 the um, um, things in the stomach, if you will, everything that would be in your front. This breastplate of righteousness, so to speak, covers it. But that would be in a physical battle. In a spiritual battle, though it covers this whole frontage of our being, the most important part is your heart. Is your heart. And so this morning, we just want to dig a little bit into the heart and why it is important to cover, as scripture says, put on the whole armor of God, especially this time around, making sure the breastplate of righteousness is in place. What is the heart? The heart is a center of your soul, is a center of your being. It carries your intellect, your emotions, and your will. We'll go through them a little bit so that we can understand why this is so important. If somebody knows your heart, it means that person has what your soul looks like in the palm of his fingers. If somebody knows your soul, therefore also it means this person knows what goes on within your heart. Why? Because that is where your intellect is centered. That is where your emotions are centered. That is where your will is also located. And therefore, the enemy is looking for your heart. And guess what? God is also looking for your heart. And therefore, it's important that we put on this breastplate that would protect us. The center of our intellect. We perceive things with our heart. Deep thoughts are formed in our heart. Boy, we meditate in our hearts. You see a person sitting down quietly and you think he or she is not talking or whatever, but he or she is meditating within the core of his or her being, within his heart. We devise plans, whether good, bad, or evil, in our heart. We believe and sometimes we doubt in our heart. Why? Because that is the center of our intelligence. The intellect of the soul is centered in the heart. It is a center of our emotions. We love with our heart. We love with our heart. Hallelujah. But guess what? We also hate with our heart. So if your heart is infiltrated with a seed of love, you love. If your heart is infiltrated with a seed of hate, guess what? You hate. Throughout the week, I've been posting a few uh, exhortations on love. And I hope that that is blessing your heart because that is what God expects you and I to have. Fill our hearts with a love that comes through Christ Jesus. We grieve in our hearts. At the same time, we rejoice within our heart. Anger bubbles and storms from our heart occasionally. But guess what? Calmness also is restored within the heart because it is a center of our emotions. Whatever goes on emotionally within your soul is situated spiritually within your heart. Number three, it is a heart which gives us our will. It is a center of our will. What you desire to do and what you desire not to do is resided within your heart. In the heart, we either yield or rebel against God's commandments. And we'll take a few um, 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 illustrations in scripture talking about how sin even came to invade the human heart. The heart is what we decide on what to do and what not to do. You know what? The brain only communicates and this body just executes. But the decision center of our will is our heart. That is why it is important, as scripture says, that make sure that in this fight, in this battle, as you are geared on and armored, make sure that the breastplate of righteousness is also in place. Because if the enemy were to succeed and enter our heart, 
that would be the end of our battle. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke that, that God will protect us even with this shield and this breastplate of righteousness. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, their heart is deceitful above all things. Jeremiah 17, verse 9. It is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know? Talking about a corrupt heart. Just like a physical heart sometimes gets sick and clocked up. The same way our spiritual heart can also get sick and clocked up with evil intentions. And therefore Jeremiah is saying here that a deceitful heart is desperately wicked. Who can even figure it out? Now, in Mark 7, 21, Jesus himself talking about how a man can defile himself or herself also talks about the heart. It says, from within, Mark 7, 21, out of the heart of men, evil thoughts proceed. And then he gives examples of some evil thoughts, fornication, theft, murders, adulteries, coveting, wickedness, deceit, lavishiousness, an evil eye, hmm, an evil eye. Railings, pride, foolishness, all these evil things proceed from within the heart of man and defiles the man. What it means is if the spiritual heart is corrupt, the whole entire body is corrupt. Why? Because it pumps all things corrupt within the entire body. When a spiritual heart is sick, the whole heart is sick because it can't operate in its optimum level. If the spiritual heart ceases to function, well, guess what? Then we cease to exist because we may be living, but we may be living as living dead. Why? Because our heart, which pumps life, the giver of life within our soul, ceases to function. Eventually, we die. No wonder when God told Adam and Eve, the moment ye shall touch that fruit, ye will surely die. What was he talking about? Because he knew that the enemy was seeking, knocking on their heart, finding a way to infiltrate. And the moment he got to them, they died spiritually. We pray that in this battle, we will not die, but we will put on the breastplate of righteousness and continue to live and do that which God has entrusted to you and I. Proverbs 4.23 also says, Above all, guard your hearts, for it is the wellspring of of life above all you can do all you can but make sure that your heart is guarded why because your very life depends on it your very life depends on it therefore put on this righteous breastplate that God has given you and I now I want to dig into a little bit and talk about how the enemy finds way into our hearts and therefore succeeds sometimes and getting our attention off God and getting our attention back to where he wants us to be. James 1.15 says something very interesting. It says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away from his own desires and enticed. The key word is enticed. The other version says, lured. Then when the desire has conceived, boy, there's a seed of corruption that is sowed. And when that seed, that desire, that corruption is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully grown, nine months, it brings forth death. Scripture says the wages of sin is death. The repercussions of sin is death. But it comes from the desires of man. When we are lured into the things of the world, when we are enticed into the things of the world, then that desire is conceived within our heart. There's a seed that is planted. And when that seed is fully grown, Scripture says it gives birth to sin and death. Sin is therefore conceived through lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It is incubated, if you will, in the hearts of man. There's no place in our body that the enemy is so much interested in than your heart. Ironically, that is the same organ that God is also seeking for. And so we realize that in Adam, Genesis chapter 3, verses 6, Mr. Adam and Mr. Eve, God says, Mrs. Eve for that matter, God says he created them in his image, gave them a word. Told Adam, work it, tell it, make sure this master plan works. 
Make sure you tell your wife that this whole garden belongs to you. I've given you power and authority. Take dominion over all things except that tree that stands in the middle. For the day you shall touch it, you will die. That is the word of God. But guess what the enemy does? You see, sin comes through the lust of the eye, which is seen. It comes through the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. What is it that Adam did or did not tell Eve? For Eve not to understand properly, if you will, that he, I mean, she allowed herself to be lured by an unknown entity. As a matter of fact, a lesser being. Scripture says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, Note that carefully. When the woman saw that the fruit was good and pleasing to the eye and also desirable, look at that, the desire of the human heart, desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he also ate it. The desires of Eve was born out of the conception of what she saw, what she perceived, as opposed to what God had told her, as opposed to what she should have heard. Now, Scripture says that faith does not come from seeing, but faith comes from hearing. As a matter of fact, it is the same faith that bores righteousness, because righteousness comes from the faith in the one who gives righteousness. His name is Jesus But instead of having faith from the word of God, they saw, they saw what seemed desirable to the eye. And scripture says, she ate and gave her husband some to eat. Adam and Eve had chosen to hear rather than to see. Then what would have happened? We know that they would not have had their heart invaded by the enemy. Another story is seen in David and Bathsheba. Now, it's ironic that we started the whole chapter with David realizing that he did not need a physical armor, but he needs a spiritual armor. A spiritual armor which includes the breastplate of righteousness. He perceived himself to be the righteousness of God. When I was in the wilderness and the enemy comes to attack, I had some unction upon me that propelled me into victory. I am the righteousness of God. He said it during the time of Goliath. But when it mattered most, Scripture says he failed. You realize that here is David, Bible says that when all kings were going to war, oh, believer, this is war time, this is battle time. When all kings, you are a king, I'm a king, you are a queen, you are a prince, you are a princess. When war time is up, we fight. David says, I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to go to battle. And because he wasn't prepared to go to battle, he was not armed properly. There was no breastplate of righteousness in place. And as he loitered around in the house, lazily walking in the house, in this quarantine period, in this self-isolation period, you may be idling around all over the place. You may be flipping the channels all the time. You may be looking for other things except seeking the face of God. I pray that God brings repentance to your heart. Because when all kings were on the battlefield fighting, David says, I'm going to chill at home. And guess what? Because he wasn't armed. As he looked, he looked. He then had a seed of corruption sown into him. His desire all of a sudden was focused on another person as opposed to God. Here it is, Bathsheba, beautifully standing, taking a bath. And her heart was oriented towards her and David fell this morning I pray that in this battle you ensure that the breastplate of righteousness is in place because when the enemy has a chance to infiltrate he takes our heart off God and focused it on himself so David instead of putting on the righteousness of God the breastplate he failed and he saw his heart being lured into Doing what he never thought he could do. Therefore, in Psalm 51, 10, after he had gone through all that and come to repentance, Scripture says, he says, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. A heart of repentance, 
a heart that this time around is covered with this righteousness that only comes from God. If this is the case, then how do we obtain righteousness? You realize that we can't gain righteousness by ourselves. The natural inclination of every man, woman born is sin. It is easier for us to sin than to do what is right. Our natural propensity to sin is higher than our natural propensity to do good. And therefore, there is an object of righteousness. So 2 Corinthians 5, 2 and 1 says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God through him. Who is he talking about? Christ Jesus. That he took upon the whole sins of this world. In exchange, he gave us righteousness. He who knew no sin took all that was sinful and filth and deceit upon himself. In exchange, giving us that righteousness that you and I cannot attain for ourselves. That is what the word of God says. In that sense, Romans 10, 9 says that if we then see this and we openly declare, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if we openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart, Oh, believe in our heart. I'm not sure what you are believing if you are listening to me for the first time. But there is a belief that God wants you to turn your heart to. And that is believing that Jesus is Lord. Believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you will be saved. Why? For it is by our heart we believe. It is our heart we believe. And it is our mouth we declare openly. Unto our salvation. This morning I pray. That whatever has occupied your heart. Allow the word of God to penetrate. And as you begin to give way. So that this word have seed in your heart. Scripture says you shall be saved. Oh hallelujah. Righteousness is only attained through faith in Christ Jesus. And that faith comes from hearing not seeing. Let me repeat that again. Righteousness is only found in Christ Jesus. Through faith. That faith only comes from hearing, not seeing. Hearing what? Hearing the word of God. So even as you listen to me, I pray that you will have faith in the word of God. Because that is what brings you righteous. One thing that the enemy cannot change concerning you and I is whether he likes it or not, we are the righteousness of God. Period. There are times where we may falter. There are times where we may slip. But that doesn't change our identity. We are still the righteousness of God. But you see, what he wants you to think is you are this filthy, good-for-nothing, defeatist person. But this morning, that's not you. As long as you have the righteous breastplate on, you are the righteousness of God. By faith, we become who God says we are. If God says, I am his son, Boy, I better believe I'm his son. If God says I'm his daughter, I better believe that I'm his daughter. Why? Because that is his word. Just like sin, the seed of righteousness is also conceived and planted in the heart. And when it's fully matured, that which is planted in us gives birth to saints, sons and daughters of righteousness, who are the exact replica of the seed that was actually planted in us. The righteousness of God. And so when Ephesians is telling us that in this battle, make sure that whatever you do, guard your heart against the leers of the enemy. Make sure you have a breastplate. That which is not made of human hands, that which is not made by your own self-doing, but that which comes from Christ Jesus. What he's actually saying is put on Christ. Turn to your neighbor if you are sitting by your wife, your spouse, your daughters, your family. Put on Christ. As long as you have Christ on, you have the righteousness of God. As I walk in that um, supermarket, I carry the righteousness of God because I have him on me. As long as I walk through the valley in the shadow of God, I walk with the righteousness of God. Why? Because I have Christ. I put on Christ. Therefore, Romans 13, it says exactly that. Romans 13, 13 to 14. Let us walk properly. Let us stand properly. Let us be armed properly. As in the day, not of rivery or drunkenness, not in lewdness or lust, not in strife or envy, but 
to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, which fulfills its lust. As long as I have Christ on, my secured righteous breastplate, I will make no provisions for the lust and desires of my heart because I am the righteousness of God. So this morning, as we delve into the second part of our armor, God is telling us that we need to ensure that we have the breastplate of righteousness on in this battle so that the enemy doesn't condemn us, so the enemy doesn't make us feel any other person except that we are saints of the Most High, have the righteousness of God on you. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of man, all ought to be protected from your heart. And therefore, put on the full armor of God, especially the breastplate of righteousness. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he bring new revelation and illumination even into his word to you. That we will stand properly armed. With all the armor that he has given you and I. For victory has already been won. In Jesus name. Amen. You want to join me even as we enter into a quick time of prayer. Even as you meditate upon the word of the Lord. We are praying concerning this word that the Lord has given us. That we are the righteousness of God. You may be sitting somewhere and guilt has so much engulfed you. You may be hiding and doesn't even, don't want even to come to public because you feel so filthy. You may have done something last night that the enemy is just poking at you, poking at you, poking at you. There is hope for you this morning. Scripture says that he's a just and faithful God. Those who have believed in him would only come and confess. And as long as we do that, he will cleanse us of all iniquities. Purge us of all unrighteousness. Put back his righteousness on us. Get us back on the battlefield. And empower us unto victory. If you are such a person, I just want you to help me even as we pray. Join me as we pray. Committing ourselves unto the Lord. The Father, may you purge us of all iniquities. Purge us of all unrighteousness. Even as we confess known sins unto you. Even the ones that we don't know, may the Spirit convict us. So that you will put on back that righteousness breastplate. Make us fit for battle. Shall we open our mouth and begin to pray? Open your mouth and begin to pray. We come to you, O oh God, knowing who we are. We come to you knowing our frailties. We come to you knowing our shortcomings. But there is one thing that never changes. Those who believe in you, those who have come to you, they have put on a new coat, a new armor. It is the righteousness of God, that which comes through Christ Jesus. In the name of Jesus we pray, O oh God, that you, O oh God, will purge us of all iniquities. Purge us, O oh God, of all unrighteousness. And may you cause us to be fit for this battle that is ahead of us. In the name of Jesus. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Your heart is the center of your intellect. It is the center of your will. It is the center of your emotions. It is in essence your soul. We want to pray once again. If per adventure... The enemy has found a way to sow little seeds of corruption into our hearts. Now that we are rising as the army of God, we shake ourselves off. We shake ourselves off. 
There is no amount of seed of corruption that would ever exist and prevail in our heart. Because the Spirit of God lives there. We want to pray once again in this area. Search me, O God, says David. See if there is any wicked ways in me. Try me, O God. And it is creating me a clean heart. Renew your rightful spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. That is our prayer. Father, we may have faltered many times. We may have failed many times. We may have mingled ourselves with dirt. But today, even as we remember you and the price that was paid on Calvary, we are praying to search us, O oh God. Purge us, O oh God. Create a new spirit within our hearts. Begin to open your mouth and talk to the Lord, somebody. Rabato si telebelebe. Mando si cabrande rebelebanda. Jesus matosi. Rematori handele belebelebos. Mayando si telebelebelebos. Rabapayan lebo si handele. Jesus touch our hearts, O Lord. Remato si telebelebelebelebos. Ramamayando si telebelebelebos. Ramamayando si telebelebelebe. Rabapasande lebelebelebelebosi. Rema masundo rebele bele bosia, randele bo kababa yandele, rumo si tapra dapra, purge purge purge, purge oh Lord purge, ramato si tele bele 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 bos, ramata yandele bo bosi handabra. Oh, we thank you, oh Lord. We give you praise, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just want you to be silent for a few minutes in your spirit, wherever you are. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to speak to you. This is your identity. Saints of the Most High God. Don't let the enemy define you. The Bible says that every tongue that would rise against you, you would arise and conquer. Because it is the inheritance of the saints of the Most High. For their righteousness is of the Lord. That's who you are. Let us sink into your spirit. Arise from wherever you are. For your light has come. Allow the Lord to put on you that breastplate of righteousness. For you are called for a battle. In a time and a season such as this. You may be listening to me and all that I'm saying. You may not even have a relationship with this giver of life. Allow me to introduce him to you. His name is Jesus. The one who comes into our lives and transforms us. Root out all the corruption within our hearts. All the evil and malice that exist. And in exchange, gives us his righteousness. If you don't know this man that I'm talking about. He needs your heart. If you want to accept the Lord as your savior says, with our heart, we believe. And with our mouth, we confess unto salvation. Just pray this short prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for coming to die on the tree. This day, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. That my heart is filled with sin. But you are the giver of life. You are the righteousness of this world. Come into my life. Take away all the sin. Take away all the filth. Take away my corrupted heart. And fill me with your righteousness. Above all, put on me your breastplate of righteousness. That I will be able to walk in this journey victoriously. I accept you as my Lord as my master and as my savior. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. If you pray this short prayer, the scripture says you have been justified. You also are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Walk in victory. Walk in victory. Walk in victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Today is a special day that the Lord has made for you and I. Even as we dine in remembrance of what he did many, many years ago. His body that was broken for us so that ours would be made whole. The blood that was shed on Calvary so that our sins would be remitted. Not only that, but that blood that brings us healing, redemption, peace. And he said we should do this in remembrance of him. In a few minutes, I just want to take you to take your time and begin to remember this Christ. Your provider. Your healer. Your victory banner. The Lord who is always there. Your righteousness. That is who I'm talking about. And as we do this in remembrance of him, we rise from the doldrums. We stand in our rightful place as victorious saints of the Most High God. And we begin and continue to fight this battle. Because victory has already been won. Father, we bless you. We give you praise and we give you honor. We thank you for who you are. What you are able to do, even in the midst and the presence of your people. The greatest miracle that has ever been said and done and told and reported of. That you can change the heart of a sinful man into that of a saint. We thank you for that victory that has already been won. We pray that even as we come to you, O oh Father, we come with a repented heart. The known and unknown sins, O oh God, we accept them. We pray that you will purge us of all iniquities. Make us fit to dine with you. And above all, may the power that is in your body and that which is in your blood propel us unto doing greater exploits for you so that we will stand properly armed until victory is won. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're joining me from home, you may have received your emblems. And so spiritually, I just want you to join me even as we get ourselves ready to dine with the Lord. This is the body of Christ that was broken for us. Scripture says, our fathers ate manna on the desert, yet they died. But Jesus is the bread of life. As we partake of his body, may he infuse in us new life. This is the body of Christ. This is the blood that was shed on Calvary for you and I. That which brought our healing and redemption. That which established us and gave us a seat. As saints of the kingdom of most high God. We pray that as we partake of his blood, may he infuse in us new life. For there is life in the blood. There is power in the blood. There is healing in the blood. May this be our portion, even as we partake this to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Get yourself ready even as we partake, even as we also get ourselves ready here. In Jesus' mighty name. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord, glory, Lord, glory, Lord, glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Power, power, wonder, working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder, working power in the prayer. Shows blood of the land. There is healing, there is healing, 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 wonder, healing. Power.
power in, in the blood, in the blood. Yeah. Healing, yes, Lord. There is healing. Healing, yeah. Oh, in the precious Shall we partake? This is the body of Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So, Father, once again, we want to bless you for this opportunity to dine with you. We give you all praise and honor, O oh God, that you have caused us to retain our identity of the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Pray that at this partaking of your body and of your blood, may we rise from whichever position we find ourselves and stand on the victory platform. May we stand properly armed with the breastplate of righteousness, that we would forge for it, O oh God, and do that which you have entrusted unto us. We pray in the name of Jesus that if there is any infirmity, ailment, anything that is of the enemy that has found its way into our bodies, at the partaking of your body and of your blood, may you bring restoration in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that we will stand here with great testimonies. That on the day where we partook of your body and of your blood, our lives had never been the same. Thank you for the lives that you've saved even today who have accepted you and confessed you as Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you send your spirit divine to guide and protect them, teach them, and lead them, O oh God, onto the path that is righteous. We thank you for who you are. Thank you for the victory won already in your name that surpasses all other names. We have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to offer our substance unto the Lord. What God has blessed us with. The little amount, whatever thing you have, let's be faithful in it. We know God is going to bless on the screen. You see the different means and medium, medium way you can offer your substance unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. You are good. You are good. You are good. Jesus. Every day. Every hour. You are good. Jesus. Everybody say. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good. You are good.
hallelujah, hallelujah. Boy, I can't wait till we gather again. You know, what I've been doing in this, I mean, isolation is trying to practice my dance. You know, that's something I've been praying so hard about. Um, Elizabeth and I have been praying for a long time. And therefore, we pray that the Lord will grant us grace, even in this isolation. So when we get back, boy, some serious new moves. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us once again. Uh, this is PIWC Worcester. We want to bless the Lord for the opportunity to come to you live every Sunday. Uh, please join us same time, 10 o'clock, every Sunday. A few of our weekly announcements. Join us via Zoom every Wednesday morning from 10 to 12 for our throne room prayer service. And in the evening, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., we just want to dig into the Word. So we have walk in the Word for you. Join us even as we study the Word of God. Get deeper into the Word of God. And every Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., we also have our encounter service where we gather as a family and we cry unto the Lord, interceding for one another. I hope you will join us. Sunday school service is coming up at 1130. Join us even as our wonderful teachers take our young ones through the word and also give them the opportunity to worship the Lord. We want to bless you for joining us. We'll see you again next Sunday. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding, may the righteousness of God that only comes through Christ Jesus be your portion and may you remain standing properly armed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.